Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service here at St. Mary Magdalene with St. Martin. An hour later, isn't it? Earlier. <laughs> Not quite sure what it is. We've had an extra hour in bed, haven't we? <laughs> Which has been a, a blessing to us all, I'm sure. Welcome to our service of, Holy, of uh, morning worship, where in particular on this Sunday in the year, we give from our own um, resources to support six different societies who are in different ways engaging with reaching out to people in need, their need of um, a hope for the future, for refugees, for those who are um, without enough means to care for themselves, those who are in need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ around the world. And we'll be seeing two different videos today, uh, of two, one from each of two of our societies, where we can get a little bit more of an insight into the work that they are doing. Today is the opportunity that we all have to make our offerings towards our giving towards those societies. We normally do that by taking an offering, passing the plate around the church, um, or by asking you to pay online. We can't in any way pass a plate around the church, but we do invite you to leave your offerings where Jenny is standing there on the giving table. If you can get them into the brown box, make sure they're marked in an envelope with the word mission or missions gift for today. If you've not been able to make a contribution today, then next Sunday or during the week via the office, if you want to pop in, to leave that with Craig is absolutely fine. Just ensure that your offering is marked with the, with the name Mission or Mission's Gift. We are looking to raise four and a half thousand pounds to give away uh, in the course of these next couple of months. Regina's going to be leading our service and I'll be leading us through the different video presentations that we'll be seeing. Good morning, everyone. And for those joining us uh, on YouTube, you are particularly warm. Welcome. Uh, we uh, are here uh, to worship God. And uh, for those who are at home, you can sing as much as you like. But in here, we are not allowed to sing. So please remain silent. Uh, as is usual, we do not have refreshments at the end of the service. After the service, please leave promptly. Now, also, we can't pass uh, the um, uh, offering basket, uh, the um, card reader, and all the offering things are on, on my left, where Amanda is just mentioned. Now, we come before God. We know he is a holy God, and we just steal our hearts and our minds to acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and invite the Holy Spirit to come and lead and guide us through this service. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. We'll sit and uh, hear our first song, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky.
before God that we know have been displeasing to our loving Heavenly Father with the sure confidence that our God is a loving, forgiving Father. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sin in penitence and faith. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As God's forgiven children, we say our prayer of thanksgiving for the many blessings that God gives us. And we say together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all humankind. We bless you for our creation, our preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world, by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, hope of glory. Give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be sincerely thankful so that we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but by walking before, in our lives, before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be your honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amanda will now come and uh, show us the video. One of the um, six societies that we support financially is called Open Doors, and many of you will have heard of Open Doors and know quite a bit about their work. I can see Penny nodding here. I had the privilege of going with Open Doors to Egypt just about uh, three years ago, I think it was, to visit uh, churches and church leaders in parts of Egypt where their presence is persecuted. So it's with great interest that I was able to see this video that Christopher sent me the other day. So let's take just a few minutes to listen to some of the work that Open Doors are currently doing.
It wasn't long ago that I had the privilege of spending some time with a, a remarkable lady called Hei Wu. She's North Korean, 70 years old, and hands down, one of the most energetic people I've ever met. But Hei Wu's life has been full of trauma. In 1997, in the midst of a great famine in North Korea, Haewoo's daughter, in her mid-twenties, starved to death in her own home. Haewoo's husband escaped to China. He found God. But sadly, he was caught by the secret police. And six months later, he died in a North Korean prison camp. Heiwu said to me, I was shocked to hear that my husband had become a Christian. But instinctively, I knew that he had found the truth. It wasn't too long after this that Heiwu herself escaped to China and, like her husband, through a series of events, became a Christian. Heiwu was caught by the secret police. She was repatriated to North Korea and placed into a prison camp. As I spent time talking with Heiwu about life in these prisons, death so rampant that bodies would lay on the ground for three or four days without being cleaned up. Stories of mental and physical abuse that would make you sick to the pit of your stomach. I couldn't help but wonder, what is it about people like Hei Wu that, that makes them risk everything for the privilege of being in a relationship with Jesus? You see, in the middle of one of the darkest places on earth, Hei Wu chooses to do something so radical, so dangerous, and so Christ-like. She said to me that, In the middle of this prison, God gave her a heart to evangelize, to tell my fellow prisoners about Jesus. And so right here in the middle of a North Korean labor camp, a secret fellowship, a secret church begins. quite moving to hear that very brief account of Hei Wu, who I met two or three years ago now, as she came to share her testimony in this country. And I was so struck by how the Lord enabled her to encourage worship when it was totally illegal in the prison camp that she was in. She used to meet, it was a women's camp, she used to meet one or two women who wanted to know more about God in the toilets, which were a disgusting place to meet anyway. And she would talk to them, and uh, they would pray together. And they'd even share communion. I think they just used some water, and I don't know what else they had to eat. But she was so alive in her faith, so deep was her faith, that she uh, was able to enable others to draw close to God and to worship him together. What is that connection with Open Doors? Well, where possible, they support, and a lot of their work, of course, can't be (laughs) advertised, but they support where they can people in such severe circumstances. 
but they also enable other churches who, like in China, are able to meet but um, have no resources. <clears throat> the Bible Society does that as well. I was with the Bible Society visiting uh, some of the churches that were allowed illegally to meet together, um, and Bible Society was supplying them with Bibles. And we went with a short, small team. I suspect you remember me telling you this at the time, that we went to some villages where women who were um, older than I had never, ever seen a Bible, and this was the first time they'd received one. So there is an overlap a little bit between Open Doors and the work of Bible Society, who we um, support as well. I'd like to invite, I think it's Sue, to come and read to us now. Would you come and read to us? And then we'll continue on with another video. Thank you. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21, feeding the 5,000. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and breast and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Sue. I had a sort of rather unusual experience just uh, before the service began. I was just looking up our reading today, and rather than specifically looking up chapter and verse, I was scanning the headings that you often get in the Bible to help you locate something in particular that you read. And I couldn't find the feeding of the 5,000, and it's because I was looking for a long passage. It's such a huge story, the feeding of the 5,000, but actually it's told in a very few verses. A short story that is hugely powerful. Jesus, the bread of life, revealing true bread to us. In the story, it's very clear that Jesus was about to share bread with others who were in need. Bread was given and fish were given, and it was then shared to feed so many more than any could possibly imagine because it was given to Jesus who blessed it first. That bread of life is given to us today to share. Physical needs need to be met. It may be given to us that we may enable others to go and share it on our behalf, like Hei Wu in North Korea when she was living and working there. I remember when I was a teenager, um, about 19, 18 or 19, I was at college, and I was particularly moved a long time ago now to pray for China and for Russia. And friends who were friends of mine from my youth group days were able to go to each of those countries, actually, and to share one way or another with people who lived there. You get stories coming back how, how somebody was in prison and a particular person was walking by, I'm being careful about what I say here, <laughs> was walking by the, uh, in the area close by to the prison walls, and uh, had some leaflets that they were giving quietly and discreetly 
to members of the public who wanted to know more about God. A wind came along and some of those leaflets blew out of the person's hand. The story was then told by one of the people who lived in that prison of how he was out for his exercise and the leaflet blew over the wall of the prison and he took it and read it and came to believe in Jesus through it and eventually was freed and quietly was able to share his faith again and tell others. We have no idea at all of how God may choose to work in any particular remote or difficult situation. But we do know that we can share with others ourselves in our community and we can share that others may themselves be able to go and share on our behalf. I was very fortunate to work with Tear Fund in northwest India many, many years ago and have been with them since to visit other projects, most notably amongst Syrian refugees in Lebanon and then amongst women who were being enabled by Tear Fund's funding to set up uh, businesses in Ethiopia, a really amazing bunch of women that I met there who, because of a little bit of grant funding that came via Tear Fund, could start up a dressmaking business or um, a, hair, a hair sort of embroidering uh, business. This enabled them to feed their children. And in turn, their children were also able to find work because they could be educated. This came from just funding that came from Tirvan to start at the right place to enable others to work so that they be, could become profitable financially and secure financially. We're going to see our second video now that uh, has come from Tier Fund. It's a little bit longer than our Open Doors one, and uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate the message that they have for us. I live in Angkalan village. We have four children. The eldest is ten. We are very poor. We catch the fish from the pond and eat vegetables. But we can't afford to buy meat. When we run out of fish, I catch frogs, crabs, and big red ants for food. In the past, we didn't always have food to eat. Sometimes we went without anything at all. The funds provide grant to WDOs in order to, to work with the, the poor families. We not only provide the food, but we provide only the skills for the poor family can survive, living sustainable in the future. As the pastor and leader in the community, I'm responsible for organizing meetings between Tier Fund's partner, WDO, and the village, and mobilizing the community. Tier Fund work with the church because the church, they know about the, the cultures of the communities already. And the church in the communities, 
they know about the way of life of the communities. They have helped us build a toilet and learn a seed to grow vegetables. They have loaned us some chickens and a pig for breeding. We were also given a bicycle for the children to get to school. During the dry season, families don't have a rice harvest. So we teach them how to grow vegetables so they have food all year round. This is the rice bank donated by Tear Fund's partner, WDO. It feeds the community during the dry season. People borrow what they need. They return their share during harvest. I'm not an educated person. I just know how to grow rice. They taught me how to grow vegetables and harvest the crops. Now we have two fields, one for watermelons, one for vegetables. The fields need a lot of water. Every day I do 300 trips from the pond. That's 600 buckets of water every day. The Jesus Christ provides the food for 5,000 people. But he provides not only Christian, but he provides Christian and non-Christian together. So that's why we want to use an example of the Christ to work in this project. When the Christians came to the village, lots of people didn't believe in them. But I always have. They are helping to save my family from poverty. Since WDO and Tier Fund arrived, the soul and the spirit of the people have been lifted. If the people have enough food to eat, a good shelters, they have time for the God, they have time to pray, and they have time to help. The church. We must not lose hope. We must hope in God and find strength in His church. Before they came, our lives were very hard. But since they came here, my family's life has got better, little by little. We still have some way to go, but we're hopeful that we'll get there. We've run out of water. Now the fish are dying.
This year has been hotter than usual. Without water, the vegetables will die. Now we're praying to God to help us. turns dry but the church doesn't and that's where you and I come in where extreme circumstances in a, in a person's life or in a community or even in a, a nation is such that help needs to be given as an emergency form of relief that's where we come in and where help can be given at grassroots level so that sustainable living is obtainable that's also where we come into to support and to pray. The, four society, the six societies that we currently support obviously involve Open Doors and Tear Fund and the Bible Society, which I have just mentioned. We also support the work of CMJ's worker Pedro in uh, Israel, in Jaffa. We support CMS and we support Church Army Officer in Kidbrook, so quite locally as well six different societies, all contributing to the welfare and the uh, spiritual welfare of different communities and different groups around the world and in our own nation. I'm just going to ask Regina to come and share something of her experience of being one who was helped by missionaries, by mission. Now, I have mentioned uh, to some of you before uh, that uh, my upbringing was not particularly easy. Um, I was uh, brought up uh, with a, a single parent. Um, I, in that part of the world, we had to pay school fees. So after primary education, uh, I had no hope of going uh, to secondary school. But my headmaster at uh, the primary school decided to write a letter because we had to do exams and after I'd done well in these exams, he, well, he felt I had to, uh, to proceed. So he wrote a letter to a headmaster at a, at a missionary uh, secondary school. The first year was fine. I don't know how I got through that. Uh, my aunt took me there and uh, I was able to do the first year of secondary school after which the headmaster at the secondary school said there was no, uh, no more funds, there were no more funds. So then I had to, to leave. On the day that I was leaving, uh, I just felt so desperate because that was the end of my life without education. I couldn't help my mom, I couldn't help my siblings. So I went, before I took my bags to go home, I walked from um, one missionary house to another just to tell them that I am leaving now because I have no fees. Anyway, I ended up at this lady's uh, you know, missionary house and she looked at the door and she just said, oh, go away. Uh, anyway, I went home. For after four weeks, she, wrote, she, she, she telephoned my aunt where I was uh, staying at my aunt's and said, could I come back to secondary school? So that was a missionary who helped me for that second year at secondary school. After that, she, she couldn't, of course, but she handed me over to another missionary who was at the same school, and um, she took me under her wings, and they looked after me, and raised funds, and uh, I was able to go through secondary school. And I am the product 
of uh, your prayers, people like you who prayed for missionaries, those missionaries out of their own meager uh, uh, savings, they could help me. So your efforts, your prayers, your money is not in vain. I stand here as a testimony of what the missionaries out there do and what your funds, your prayers, and your contributions can do to transform a child's life. Thank you. There are two or three of us here who have worked for mission and societies one way or another over the years. And uh, I'm sure many of you have worked or follow closely the work of particular mission organizations that you have a heart for and an interest in. Thank you, Regina, for your very personal story. It's really good to hear how people have been touched by others' lives that have been given in that kind of service and to see the difference that can make. Something that might seem quite little is actually quite big. The very short story of the feeding of the 5,000 is an enormous story for those who were there at the time of Jesus and for us today to see the extraordinary, miraculous power of God when we give to him. And it's in that light of Jesus' life of hope that he pours out his hands of hope, that he reaches out to others, that we as a church want to give to these particular societies this year. And it's why we set a target of four and a half thousand pounds, though we are a church of about 120, 130. We set that target because we believe that's the right amount for us in this particular time to be giving and we ask you to prayerfully consider what the Lord is asking of you today to contribute. Let's just say a, a short, I'll just say a short prayer right now and then Regina will continue to lead us in our worship. Father we give to you our concern, our anxiety sometimes our desire to reach out to those who are in great need physically, emotionally and in great need of your help and of the revelation of your love. Show us, Lord God, what you are calling us to give that you may take it and bless it and multiply it. Amen. We continue to reflect on um, what Amanda said to us and uh, on the videos that we saw as we affirm our faith uh, in the words of the Apostles' Creed and we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sit now to hear our intercessions from Chris Hunt. Let us pray for the church and the work of our mission societies. Father God, we give you thanks for all those who devote their lives to mission. We think particularly of Pedro and Ana Santos at Beit Emmanuel, who we support through the work of the CMJ, Christian Mission to the Jewish People. 
We also bring before you Faith Gordon, our link missionary who for many years has been working in Brazil. I believe she's now returned to this country and is looking for other opportunities to serve. We remember, we bring before you those people who in great danger, great sacrifice, are working in parts of the world where to be a Christian is dangerous. People who work with open doors in North Korea, in Saudi Arabia, in Nigeria. Lord, in your mercy. Nearer to home, we lift before you the church army and particularly the work that is being done in the Kidbrook estate. We pray for the people who are touched by the work of the church army, work that is made more difficult at this time of COVID and lockdowns and social distancing. Lord, so many of the people are socially distanced in normal times. They lack the human contact. They fail to connect with society. And the work of church army to reach out to them, to touch, is made so much more difficult. We pray for all those who have been helped and who continue to need help. Lord, in your mercy. We know the Bible Society was founded on a mission to bring the Bible into every language, <coughs> every language on the planet, that all may know the love of Jesus Christ. We know that languages are being lost, possibly some languages now will not receive their Bible before the last speakers die. Nevertheless, the work of the Bible Society continues to bring Bibles to as many people as possible. We give thanks for the courage of people who print Bibles in places where to own a Bible is risky. Lord, in your mercy. And remembering the work of Tear Fund, whose campaigning work embraces campaigning on global warming. We've seen in the film how the work they've done to enable to teach people in Cambodia to grow food fails because of a failure of rain. We pray for the leaders of the world, those who have the power to form environmental policy to accept that this is a grave emergency, that people's lives are suffering and measures should be taken, hopefully, to halt global warming. Lord, in your mercy. Within our own church, we look at the missional outreach the work we do at Gilroy Court, the contributions we make to the food bank in Purley, many other ways that individually and privately we seek to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes, Lord. Give us courage to speak, to bear witness to you. Lord, in your mercy. 
In closing, we pray for all those in the parish who are ill at this time, all those known to ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. We gather those prayers in the prayer that our Lord taught us, and we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We join in the collet that being said across the world, and we say together, Blessed Lord, who caused all your holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience, in the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit as we hear our last uh, song. Uh, that's why we are here. Regina closes our service together. First thing just to say to those of you who um, were here in this church about 20 years ago uh, that Morris Everly, who was um, a reader here, very sadly has just passed away. He died yesterday morning, Sunday morning. And he was a reader actually for quite a long time here and moved to Nailsey near Bristol with his wife, Pat. He has three sons. So if you recall him, Pray, and if you, even if you don't, do pray for the family at this sad time for them. Next weekend is a bit of a light weekend. And we, Val is running the light party on October the 31st, but by Zoom. So there can be lots of Zooming around, going with, uh, with various children and contacts we have. So do pray for her as 
she um, leads that. And Penny, who's new to many of us here, Penny's been church two or three times, is uh, doing, doing a little bit of work alongside Val to um, do something different at church, which was an idea that Brian inspired us with from um, his former Baptist church in Bromley. So Penny, come and tell us what's going to be happening after the zooming around of the light party. Something physical is going to happen, isn't it? Penny. Hi, good morning, everyone. Lovely to be with you all this morning. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have the light party next Saturday, the 31st of October. Um, and I'll be helping Val with that, and that will run on Zoom between 4 and 4.45. If any children want to join for that, that should be fine. We'll be just doing some activities on Zoom for that. And then after that, we are looking to create um, a hope-filled pumpkin display outside the front of the church. So we're just asking the church family if they want to join in and helping us to create the pumpkins. Um, we're just saying that we'd love to have five pumpkins to spell out the words Jesus. So if anyone wants to get involved in creating those pumpkins, if they can just let Val know, and then she can give you one of the letters. Um, and then additionally, we would love pumpkins with hearts and crosses on. And also, we want to keep them really hopeful, so we'd love it if you want to paint them with rainbow colours or not. That's up to you. Um, and then if you could just bring them to the front of the church next Saturday at 5 o'clock, and then between 5 and 5.30, we'll place them outside the church. Um, and then we'll have a few little treats to give to the children as well. So looking forward to that. Thanks, Penny. And each pumpkin will have a little tea light in it, and so we hope we'll have enough pumpkins, not going to be big ones, right along the front of the church lit up. So with Jesus' name in the middle and then other Christian images in them so that uh, any little children or big children or young adults running up and down the road going trick-and-treating will just be reminded that actually it's about the light of Jesus. So um, if you'd like to join in and buy a small pumpkin and carve it, I can tell you, have you ever done one, Penny? Yeah, I can tell you from when I was a student in, the, in America, of course, it was very big there, and you could have really good pumpkin fights with the insides of the pumpkin. <laughs> so if you, you sort of attack each other with its contents, or you could cook with its contents as you carve it out. So that's next Saturday. And then on Sunday at 4 p.m., we're going to have our annual memorial service. It's so often called a service of lights because we light little tea lights. And so I've kind of renamed it that to be in keeping with the light of, that Jesus brings into our life in very dark times. If you'd like to come and join us here at 4 p.m. for a service of lights, our annual memorial service, when we give thanks to God for the lives of those, each of us and others who will come, have lost as they've died. Um, then you're very welcome to be here. Um, come anyway. You don't, you don't need to have been recently bereaved in order to be here. Come and just be part of the congregation in worship and in prayer for those who have been recently bereaved. So next weekend is our weekend of light. I think I don't need to... Uh, you, the uh, notice sheet that you were sent by email is, is very self-explanatory, so I don't think I need to add to that. Thank you. As we close our uh, uh, missions uh, give Sunday, uh, let us close in uh, this prayer. Lord God, we pray for our church gathered here that the support we give to the missions today may bring us all into closer communion with our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Father God, fill us with your spirit so that strengthened in faith, inspired in hope and love, we may spread the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, to all humankind. Rouse your church in this land. Restore in us a sense of mission. By your Spirit, teach us to give our energy, our time, our money, our service, and our prayers, that your kingdom may be advanced here and in all the world. Amen.
Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs>